Good evening, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be here this evening. My name is Coretta Scott King, the wife of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Some of you may know and others may not be aware that my husband had a very special relationship and connection with the island of Jamaica and its beautiful people. Martin is best known for his vision of a society in which race is not an issue in the way people are treated or allowed to live their lives. His efforts help to change the world for better in noticeable ways. Martin and I visited Jamaica in June of 1965. His arrival in Jamaica was not an official visit what was arranged by the University of the West Indies. He was invited to give the annual valedictorial sermon to its graduating class. His speech was entitled, Facing the Challenge of a New Age. He used no notes, unlike me, but he spoke from the heart about the passing of an old colonial order and the need for a worldwide brotherhood and the need to fight injustice with love and also the need to strive to be the best that we can be at whatever we choose to be. And this was in this speech was included one of his most famous exhortations. It goes thus, if it falls to our luck to be street sweepers, sweep the streets like Raphael painted pictures, like Michelangelo carved marble, like Shakespeare wrote poetry, and like Beethoven composed music. Sweep the streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth would have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper. <laughs> Following the service, Martin and I attended a dinner at King's House. It was hosted by the Governor General, Sir Clifford Campbell and Lady Campbell. Then the next day, Martin delivered yet another stirring 40 minute speech at the National Arena that was packed. And there he was also given the keys to the city of Kingston. Martin began his address by saying that he had never felt more at home anywhere else in the world. He said, in Jamaica, I feel like a human being. And he, he um, added that he was proud to be among his brothers and sisters on this wonderful island. We also attended a reception at the home of the director of the United States Agency um, of international development, U.S. aid. Then we were honored to visit the grave of Jamaican national hero, Marcus Garvey, to lay a wreath out of respect for a man that Martin held in great esteem. Martin would say that Marcus Garvey gave Negroes in the United States a sense of dignity, a sense of personhood, a sense of somebodiness, as he put it. Martin saw the freedom that he was fighting for in the United States in action in Jamaica, which was a politically independent majority black country. We spent 10 days on the island, just traveling all over, enjoying its beauty and freedom. We especially appreciated the multicultural multiracial aspects on the island. Martin said, here in Jamaica, you have people from so many national backgrounds, Chinese, Indians, so-called Negroes, and you can go down the line, Europeans and people from many, many nations. Do you know that they all live here and have a motto, out of many people, one people? And they say here in Jamaica, we're not Chinese, we're not Japanese, we're not Indians, we're not Negroes, Englishmen or Canadians. We are one big family of Jamaicans. He hoped that one day America would follow Jamaican's example. 
Martin was so very comfortable in Jamaica, as you can see from the beautiful pictures we're showing. And he visited Jamaica as often as he could. He returned in 1967, where he completed the manuscript, which became the, his most important book, entitled, Where Do We Go From Here? My dear husband chose Jamaica not only because it provided the opportunity to reflect and uh, avoid distractions, but because his spirit and his vision was so inspired by this beautiful, independent, proud, black governed country. His former aide and friend, um, the former US ambassador to the United Nations, Andrew Young, often stated that Jamaica was one of Martin's favorite places to visit. Martin visits and interludes of reflection in Jamaica came at a very crucial point in the struggle, both in terms of the direction of the civil rights movement and in his own thinking and vision, which had broadened from civil rights in the United States to human rights for all mankind. Unfortunately, as many of you know, my dearest Martin was assassinated in 1968, but his wonderful, wonderful legacy lives on and the beautiful memories of our times in Jamaica will always be with me. Thank you and good night. Oh, wow, wow. Beautiful, beautiful. Very, very well presented. Wow. Isn't it beautiful though? Seriously, I mean, he, he must have, <laughs> the ability to even swim in a swimming pool during that time was an issue here at that time in the United States, you know, where blacks couldn't swim in certain pools, you know, it was just, mm -hmm. I can just imagine how free he felt yeah. there. And I, I love, love that word. Yeah, he I love what he, he Yeah. Go ahead. I love Sorry. What he, yeah, I love what he said here. You know, in Jamaica, I feel like a human being. Hmm. You know, I always love to go to that yeah. great island, which I consider the most beautiful island in the world. Right, right. Yes, and I, I heard also that Andrew Young, when he was thinking of being mayor of Atlanta, he thought of Jamaica as a place mm -hmm. where you had different group. Thank you for the chats. I'm seeing so many encouraging comments in the chat. Can, can we record this for, excuse me, Madam President, can we record this for the, the uh, independence celebration and play it there? So beautiful. It's been recorded and we'll see how it fits in when okay. the entertainment committee. That's a great suggestion. That's a great suggestion. Any other, oh, I, the comments are here from Mercedes, very good. The um, Patterson, yes, this is so important because not everybody knew that Dr. King went to Jamaica. And I like the way he connected with Marcus Garvey because you have so many, so many of these M men, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, Bob Marley, all of these Jamaican connection. And then you have Dr. Martin, all these M's, M men rising up at a time when it was so difficult to speak out against injustice. Mm 